<clears throat> What's up, guys? Welcome back to Echoing Theology. This is episode 12. I'm psyched to have one of my best friends from Echo, the program at the University of Notre Dame, Sarah Catherine Jeffries. How are you, Sarah Catherine? You on mute? I'm good. How are you? Okay. Okay. There we go. Um, good. Um, good. Am I on mute? Can you hear me? Okay. I can hear you now. I can hear you now. How's it going? Yeah, I'm great. I'd like to be invited. I'm pretty good. Um, you know, things have been really busy, but good busy. So great. Yeah. Good, good. Yeah, no, it's definitely, I'm sure for you guys, it's kind of a busy day considering we're Tuesday. And when, when do you guys do faith formation? What night is that? We do that Wednesday. Okay. So yeah, yeah you guys are busy. Uh, I'll let you tell yeah, us. Yeah. Yeah. Well, pretty, pretty standard Sunday or Wednesday, right? Yeah. I think so. Most parishes are yeah. like, and yeah. the, you also have the occasional Monday nights, so yeah. Um, although our our Spanish program here does Tuesdays, so that's kind of unique. Very nice. So I'm yeah. sure it's not unique around here, but generally speaking, I think that's a fairly unique day. All right, so uh, yeah, Sarah Catherine, if you could just tell us a little bit about yourself, that'd be a great place to start. Yeah, so I'm Sarah Catherine. I am from Raleigh, North Carolina initially, but I went to Baylor University for undergrad, Sikkim Bears. Uh, everyone in Echo laughs at me for introducing myself that way. Um, and let's see, I have a little brother um, and I also have a um, Bichon at home, a little, little dog. He looks like a little with an Afro. Um, so let's see. Um, yeah, I loved growing up in North Carolina, and I really enjoyed my time in Texas, and now I'm um, in Michigan for my echo placement, and I'm loving it up here, so. Great. Yeah, no, thank you. Yeah. That's great. A little quick intro. Um, you and I actually have a mutual friend uh, at Baylor, or from Baylor. Uh, yeah, we do. Who I met in seminary, and you met at Baylor, obviously. Uh, ben Haddock, shout out to Ben, who I saw last week, and we we all talked last week, so that was fun. That was a fun time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think that's kind of how we met, if I recall. You were like, "Wait, do you know Ben?" And I was like, "Yes." And we were like, "Ah, cool yeah, interview week, was... multiple uh, mutual friends." Yeah, no, when we did yeah. we did our interview, um, I don't remember what day you and I were talking. It was probably the first or second day, and it was the first but, day. Was, yeah, true. I mean, that was so long ago now, though that uh you said I went to Baylor and I said do you know Ben Haddock and you said why yes I do and uh not in that accent though but how I did not say it like that <laughs> yeah not all of us have the only accents but the Catholic world is small people it's great small and interconnected it really is and and as I've said on here a couple times I'm sure and the audience I'm sure is getting maybe annoyed by this but the bigger that the circle gets like the more connections you have it's weird because it's the smaller that your community mm -hmm. actually gets you know like when i met gianna yep and tim but when i met gianna specifically like she's worked with three of my best friends and has contacts with some of their best friends so it's just their no way. circles getting smaller that's why she calls me the echo uh kevin bacon which i have my plate on my office uh, bookshelf Anyway, um, uh, so how did you how did you find out about Echo in the first place? Yeah, so I um, graduated from Baylor in 2022, um, and I stayed an extra year and worked at Baylor. And during that time, we got a um, new director of campus ministry who was an Echo alum, and um, I started to express a desire to study theology. Um, and she was like, you got to apply to Echo. And I was like, I don't know, like, maybe I will, maybe I won't. And she was like, okay, well, at least let me give Scott Boyle your contact info. And uh, I if, and I was like, well, okay, sure. So I talked to Scott Boyle about Echo and I was like, um, talking to him about, you know, kind of like what I wanted to do in the future and how there were some routes I was discerning, like, I uh, wanted to do something to serve the church, but I also wanted to do academic theology, but I wasn't sure if I wanted to teach or work in a church or what in the future. And he was like, I go, would be great for you. Um, and I um, thought more about it and uh, I ended up applying to Echo and a few other programs. And, you know, I had, 
I received really good formation at Baylor. I was really blessed and I wanted to be part of passing that on. So it kind of um, interest aligned. But yeah, I first heard about it from the director of campus ministry at Baylor. So shout out to shout out to Katie, who's an Echo alum. Hi, Katie. Uh, yeah, we haven't actually talked about Katie on here at all yet. So I'm, I'm hoping to maybe get her on at some point to the podcast. I think that I think an episode with Katie would be fun to kind of talk about you know, yeah, well, her time in Echo, but also kind of that connection in, in Texas is, is now you and Ben and Katie and I are all uh, interconnected at this point. <laughs> so, yeah. well, now that you put it on the interweb, we'll see. <laughs> yeah, we will, we will. Uh, that's no pressure to Katie, though, to get on here. But maybe I'll, maybe I'll text her about it. Um, tell her, to, tell her to go watch this episode later and she'll hear her name. That'd be fun. Uh, great. So, I guess what, uh, before we get to your placement, what convinced you to apply to ECHO and then ultimately to say yes to the ECHO program? Yeah, um, let's see. I applied um, to ECHO among some other theology programs. And like I said, I wasn't sure if I wanted to go like, straight academic or what route I wanted to go when I decided to study theology. And so I, um, like I said, I also wanted to serve the church and so I was like you know well I'll apply and I got invited to interview and I went to interview week and I uh, loved a lot about interview week and at that point I kind of just turned it over to the Lord and was like all right if I um if I get in I'll I'll go do this and I'll um and if not you know then I'll take it as it's not what you wanted me to do and so um so I um but I prayed a lot about it and I um really just felt kind of like like at interview week, like this is my place. These are my people sort of thing. There's a lot of really like-minded people and I yeah. uh, love that. And uh, so if it was really retreat like interview week, um, that was kind of a gift, but um, yeah. So that's kind of, um, so I kind of like, by the time I got accepted, knew I was going to say yes. So that makes sense. Kind of emerged. Yeah, no, questions. that totally makes sense. <laughs> Um, I also forgot to mention yeah. uh, that you are also one of the members of the Breakfast Club, as as we like to call it. Uh, you know, you were that occasionally <laughs> you were that early mass, and then meet us for breakfast occasionally. Yeah. Occasionally, so you are an honorary <laughs> member of the Breakfast Club. Um, oh, shout out to uh, shout out to Meredith. Shout out to to Miranda, Maddie, uh, Matt. So and uh, uh, of course James. So. Can't forget James. Hi, James. We love Thanks, you. Bridget. Yes. Yes, Bridget. Yeah. So uh yeah, no, there's there's a good amount of us. We had a good crew. Um, we do. We do have a good crew. And um yeah, there's not there's not much of a better way to start the day at Notre Dame than Crypt Meth and an omelet at the dining hall. I must say. Yeah, totally. Bowl of cereal and an omelet. So, you know, it's funny because I, I I've mentioned this before, like my breakfast used to be kind of small. Now it's kind of turned more into my bigger meat like big meal of the day but I realized at Notre Dame I actually do have to eat larger portions of food than my undergrad because we're walking more than my undergrad <laughs> so my undergrad was really <laughs> so I'm like I really should be eating a little bit more food and considering we're in class for five straight hours basically at times yeah yeah that'll do it pretty hungry at dinner <laughs> so yeah true 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 great so yeah. you kind of mentioned you're in Michigan so if you want to tell us a little bit yeah. about where you are in Michigan and then also your uh, placement. What are you doing there? Yeah, yeah. So I am in the wonderful Diocese of Kalamazoo in Michigan, um, which is, so if Indiana's like right here and um, South Bend's like right there, we're like here. Um, not quite far enough over to like the Archdiocese of Detroit, but we are the um, nine counties in Southwest Michigan. Um, Kalamazoo is about an hour and a half to to the uh, northeast of um, South Bend, and um, yeah, so I my placement is St. Mary's in Kalamazoo, um, and what do I do? I um, am the confirmation prep catechist. Um, I do some activities with kids after mass. Um, my priest is the director of vocations for the diocese. So I also do a little bit with the vocations office. Um, I've done some website updates, um, kind of whatever. I've done some youth things, some help with youth things. So I've done a little bit of 
kind of um whatever's needed um and yeah so i love it great yeah so you're, you're taking over from mary yeah. kate right mary kate was there before yeah yeah so we we kind of have a requisite there has to be a double name here that's a joke but double name yeah, yeah. <laughs> mary kate so yeah, so that's, yeah. yeah that's a fair point i i wonder who I, you know, if you're, if you're looking to apply to the class of 22, somebody's going to have a double name, you know, double first name, because we need to continue it. So, um, no, that's great. You're, and, and you're in Kalamazoo. So you're near, uh, for those of you that don't know, that's kind of near, um, uh, Battle Creek, Michigan territory. Um, not necessarily near Detroit. Serial town or Serial city. Sorry. How far are you from Ann Arbor where the university of Michigan is? Home of the Wolverines? For a couple hours. A um, couple hours. Um, we're an hour from Grand Rapids, about two to three from, De no, I'm probably three from Detroit. Okay. So, um, if I want, wanted to drive to Canada one day, I could drive a few hours to Detroit and cross the border and then come back. For sure. So. Yeah, no, definitely, definitely. And uh, since we're talking about Detroit, I just want to give a shout out real quick to a good <laughs> friend of mine, Matt Sawicki. And then, of course, our Echo uh sister in christ uh ireland majeski so shout out to ireland who's from detroit home of eminem so uh she'll, she'll appreciate that <laughs> you know i really thought you're about to give a i really thought you're about to give a shout out to the lions uh shout out to uh uh jared goff i know i know matt stafford's not there anymore but uh they're doing really good stuff there in detroit so. i don't that's okay that's okay yeah. you know they're better than the pistons now so i'll say that either way uh we're talking about echo we're not talking about uh, football that's another podcast that i run the o-line outlet podcast that's a whole other thing uh draft week's coming up so i'm really <laughs> excited about that anyway there's a plug uh so so you, you work kind of in the catechesis area of, mm -hmm. of faith formation yeah yeah so this this is your yeah. This is kind of your first experience being a catechist, correct? Yes, it is. It How's that be. experience been for you? Yeah, it's been pretty good. I've I've learned a lot. Um, let's see. I am. Um, yeah. So it's it was it's been it's been kind of interesting to try to strike a balance between like covering everything that I need to in the curriculum, and then also making sure all the sacrament prep stuff is taken care of. Um, but yeah, I'm learning a lot, like I say, and I'm trying to be intentional about creating space for prayer and um, encouraging um, the candidates to grow in that. So yeah, great. Yeah, no, that 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 that's awesome. Uh, yeah, being a catechist is a wonderful gift. Um, I hope and I pray that the Lord has given you some consolation in that experience so far. That's a, that's a big hope that I have for you. So. Um. Yeah. Great. So what, what has been yeah, the best well, part about Echo for you so far? You. It's yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Sorry. I, I know the Wi-Fi keeps going out once in a, a while. Wow, it's, it's not, it's not terrible. Um, on this no, end, no. but oh, you're good. what's been the it's best part one. Of Echo for you so far? Um, that's tough. Uh, or a good part about Echo. Mm, yeah. I don't know. I really, there are several good parts, okay. But um, I really am enjoying the place where I am. Um, I can tell this is definitely where the Lord wants me to be in. Um, I um, so I love I love where I am. I love being here at St. Mary's. Um, what else? Um, I really love being surrounded by like-minded people. Um, at um, yeah, that I mentioned that was a gift of interview week, and it's continued to be a gift of time in the program. It's uh some really great conversations really great friendships like you're saying um what else um also all the formation it's incredible um lean into that people um both those applying and those uh accepted in the program just yeah. uh lean in into the formation and see how you can grow yeah no that, that's been very unique I, I know with the couple former seminarians that i've had on here we've kind of talked about the the formation as well and those four pillars and um we think it's definitely important that the, the universal church kind of understands that those four pillars of formation and it's not just you know for seminarians or 
uh, for for church leaders. It really should be for the laity uh, in some in some capacity, not necessarily at the same level, of course, but in some um, in some fashion. So it's good. This program is very good, and I think very intentional about that. But what uh, what advice would you give to somebody thinking about Echo Twenty Two at this point? Because the Twenty Ones have uh, been accepted at this point, and they're getting their placements. I think May Six. So be on the lookout for that episode when that comes out. Yeah. Um think advice to someone applying um hmm, i think well one talk to scott oil um he's a very good person to talk to and to um answer your questions bounce ideas off of um you know if you're saying like my goal is x and it doesn't really align with echo he might be able to help you talk through that or if it you know maybe could fit then um to echo he would probably encourage you to apply so you know he's a good place to start for sure um and um i would also just say to be open um to um be open to where um the lord's leading you and how he might be asking you to um to serve the church and if that's through echo wonderful and it um you discern that there's another way he's asking you to serve that's also wonderful but um but definitely just keep in mind where does the lord want me to serve um more as my heart drawn to and um yeah i really appreciated that about the interview week that echo was big on mutual discernment and um i thought that was that was really good and very helpful for me so yeah totally they they really are very intentional about that so approach I mean, it prayerfully definitely yeah prayer prayer is a big piece and i, I don't know what your experience mm -hmm. was in the retreat week or not the retreat but the uh the interview week but I felt like see, see, there you go. There you go. <laughs> I felt like in the free time it was treated like a retreat. Like I treated our off time, excluding uh watching the Super Bowl and prepping for my interview. See, there's I roll number one thousand five hundred and fifty-three, I think we're on at this point. Um either way, just oh, inside joke, inside joke. Just... It's okay. What's that? All in jest. Oh, okay. I thought you said I feel bad for Jess. I was like, oh. Oh no, that's not what I said. I was gonna say I, I, I probably. Not what would I said. Too. I probably would too. Um, shout out to Jess. She's wonderful. Yes, she's actually trying to get on an episode, so we are gonna get Jess on at some point. You um, should get Jess and Connor. Get your community members. I want to, and you know the other thing. Uh, I I may have mentioned it on the last episode, but I, I'm I'm gonna just if I haven't already, I'm gonna break the news. We have a few episodes scheduled for the summer that are actually going to take live from South Bend. So looking forward to that. So if, if you want to come back on oh, nice. someplace in South Bend, let me know. Uh, we can kind of do another conversation of how the summer is going. Cause the summer looks very different than the, the school year itself. And, you know, cause our school year is really condensed yeah. into the course of six weeks. So uh, it's a lot, but all right. Well, I uh, yes. have more questions for you. I'd like to. But, but we learn a lot. We learn a lot. It's true. We, we, we do learn a lot of mm -hmm. things. And uh, yeah, like the training class was great. You also get a lot of great quotes that are taken out of context. So that's fun. All right. But I want to play a game <laughs> for you. Um, I'm going to ask you a question. And then I just, I want your, you know, quickest response mm -hmm. to that question. Notice I didn't send you that list. Okay. All right. You ready? Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm trying to prep for this. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Let's go. Best place to relax at Notre Dame? Um, outside. On the quad. Great. Uh, best food? During the summer, food? outside. True. Best food at the university? Omelets. Fair enough. Uh, favorite season of the year? And Some, ice cream. Ice cream too. The free ice cream or an off-campus ice cream? The free ice cream. 100%. Love it. Love it. Love it. I, think, I, think, I think maybe Meredith said the same thing. So. Yeah. Either way. Top uh, Can't go wrong. Summer, fall, winter, or spring? Um. Now that I'm in Michigan, fall, because it's beautiful and because apples. 
we picked apples twice. It was great. That's so fun. I miss that. I'm going to do that in the summer when I go home. I know like that's towards the end of the season, but I'll get home late spring. So we're there. Uh, favorite author? Oh, oh, that's mean. Uh... Oh, you're, you're not going to like my last question. <laughs> Great. I've, um, I guess I've always gone to C.S. Lewis, but I'm not, I really do like Lewis. I'm just not, it changes by season. That's cop-out answer. Fair but enough. it changes by season and what I'm needing to read, like what kind of spiritual books, what kind of fiction I'm enjoying, all that. Who is it right now in the season that you're in? Or at least just, just one author maybe that you're reading. Who Who's somebody you're reading? That might be a better question. Who's somebody I'm reading? I'm actually reading, um, um the the privilege of being a woman by alice von hildebrand and that's beautiful okay so, okay yeah uh, favorite yeah. hobby recommend that to all the ladies out there well everyone favorite hobby um a lot of favorite hobby uh reading going to coffee shops with people walking uh, great if you like coffee shops self Bend's a great place to be by the way just saying uh we have a very special place on sundays i will say that uh <laughs> she knows what i'm talking about uh favorite gospel we study at a coffee shop on sundays favorite gospel ah, i think i gotta go with john okay that's uh, a quick answer fair enough favorite beach in north carolina oh mm. my favorite beach is actually not in north carolina but uh bald head island where's that um, it's across a ferry from Southport, so you leave your car in Southport, take a ferry, and only golf carts. It makes the water really pretty, and the beaches are beautiful. So. Great. Uh, a lot saint. of nature. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, a saint who you want to learn more about? St. Catherine of Siena. She's a good one. Uh, I can actually send you some documents on her at some point if you'd like. So. Hey, I'll read them. You can send them away. Sounds good. Just read them after your class is done uh <laughs> your uh your current favorite passage from scripture mm, my current favorite passage from scripture mm, that's really hard uh current favorite passage from scripture that's very hard but i'm, I'm currently this is not a passage it's a book can i give you a book you give me a book I'm currently loving the Psalms, um, which, um, yeah, because they're just like, there's a Psalm for every mood, for every season. And, um, you know, they touch on a lot of salvation history and they're really great to pray with. So, Psalms. Great. Best class taken at Baylor? Um, probably mm, World Cultures 2 was one of my favorites when I took it. Great. Also, real quick, I just want to give a shout out to Robert Griffin III for being a Baylor Heisman. Sorry, I want to do that at the very beginning. I'm trying to get all my Baylor fixings in here. So uh, so these are the two questions you're not going to like. I'm so sorry. Oh, great. That's University okay. of North Carolina or North Carolina State? North Carolina State, 100%. Okay. We are kind of ABC fans in our family um anybody but carolina that's a joke but also I, I grew up a duke fan so i cannot pull for the tar heel i i don't even know that i could like i can't the color you're wearing i can kind of wear but also kind of can't uh yeah that's fair enough i mean it it was one of my only clean shirts today so i haven't done laundry oh yet. well that was a, like a that was a duke fan joke because that's no, I, I get you I get you. I'm also okay. wearing uh, my jeans. I'm not trying to call you out for that. No, 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 you're good. My my Duke uh colors are my jeans right now. So, mm -hmm. uh, all right. Here's the question you're really not gonna like. You need to attend one. You need to consider one, and then one is an absolutely not. Not mm -hmm. Baylor is not an option. You ready? Okay. University okay. of Texas at Austin. Horns up, Texas A and M, go Aggies, or TCU Horn Frogs. I almost wore my TCU jersey today, but so way. is this game? Is this sports games or for no, school? No, no, like if you're for school, if you were to go to a university, 
not Baylor, out of those three, you need to attend one, well, you need to consider one, and then one is an absolutely not. Well, see, but that just depends on what I'm studying. Uh, let's just give you a general that's at all three of those. Let's just say you're studying business. <laughs> or, law. Um, or law. One of those two. Business or law. Okay. Um, I'm going to go law because I know that a little more. So if I'm going law, I think I'm going to attend UT. Horns up. Consider A&M and say no to TC. Okay. That's fair enough. Okay. I don't have to go to the football games. No, you don't. You you don't. Um, and this you, is a thought experiment. You also don't need to wear the burnt orange either. So. No, that's my that's my gut instincts. People don't come for me, but I don't have to wear orange. No. Um, you're wearing purple though. I mean, you're wearing a TCU color right now. It's a very nice shade of purple though. I'll say that much. Yeah. Yeah, well, I like purple. I don't like TCU, but I like purple. That's okay. Shout out to um, Andy Dalton and the This was, this was kind of my this is kind of my go to lint dress, but <laughs> it's no longer lint. So, also, what was your uh, just out in sincere curiosity because I, I didn't ask this. What was your favorite food in Texas? Oh, there was a taco place that was really good. Like real oh tacos God, or like Tex Mex? Go there. Uh, it was kind of more Tex Mex, but it was good. They also have really good real taco places, though, of course. Was it a food truck? So, uh, the Tex Mex. Uh, um, no, this one's not, but it was open 24 7, used to be. Now it's open like 24 6. But yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, you can't really complain. You can get like your favorite taco at 2 a.m. Oh, totally. I mean, yeah, when you have more options than Taco Bell, but, like. The taco, the taco, um, the taco trucks are wonderful, too. I also love a couple of those. So, yeah. Um, yeah, that's good. That's good. We Yeah, we have some good places around here. The thing I was telling Jess the other day, I was like, it, where we are right now, there's a couple of things we can get bored of. Food is not an option. Like, we can't get. Oh, bored no, of you can't. Tex-Mex food, like, I could live off of. Mm -hmm. I could eat taco. I could probably eat tacos breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So if, so would tacos maybe be, would that be a food crossing your mind? You know, if I were to ask you, like, if you were on a stranded island, what food would you bring? Would tacos be an option that would cross your mind at least? Probably not. Okay. Because if I was stranded on a desert island, I would want something that stays good for a while and the critters wouldn't get into it logical i like it i like the answer you and i think very similarly so like that's i mean i mean like if you bring a bunch of tacos they're gonna go bad in like three to five well no if you don't have a refrigerator they're going bad they're going bad in less than one 24 hours so yeah and then you're like literally i would just spear for fish that's what i would do right bring like protein shakes or something that's true. Jess has been using the blender lately, so that's good. Mm -hmm. You do that. Yeah. Hopefully we won't have to think about this. Yeah, hopefully not. Um, yeah, I mean, there's there's two lakes at Notre Dame, so, you know, it's, but there's a big campus around it. Anyway. What does the blender have to do with the fish? Nothing. You said you said protein shakes. So. Oh, oh, I'm just thinking. Like oh, the, boxed the or bottled. The pre desserts. Okay. That's what I'm taking with me. Fair enough. That's, yeah. Okay. Well, it, you saying that just made me think of us making protein shakes at the house. But Just take your recycling with you when you get rescued. And then you won't kill the animals. Would I, would I, would I, would I float in the water in my recycling bin? I don't know. If you have one, yes. Okay. Cool. Cool. That's, that's just a, that's just a theoretical question, more or less. But yeah. anyway. Thank you for taking the time, Sarah Catherine. We really appreciate your time. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, happy to. Yeah, I, I appreciate it, and uh, hopefully, somebody takes something from this interview that's you know that they're considering. Yeah. So, so, all right, guys. Yeah. Also, if um if anyone is um 
kind of newer to Catholicism and wants to talk to an echo who's newer to Catholicism, I'd be happy to chat with anyone about that. Great. Yeah, no, you you have a very, very interesting story. You have a great story. So, um, oh, well, thank you. But yeah, of course. Um, great. So be on the lookout for this episode, episode 12, and then episode 13 coming up, uh, I believe on Friday, we're going to have it. So um, Friday the 25th. So anyway, take care, guys. JP2, pray for us. Peace.